words to each and every one of you. We all understand what hangs in the balance in Ukraine and how fragile the situation is. We stand together with the people of Ukraine in their long and difficult pursuit of liberty. You know, as peoples, our ties run very deep. Our historic bonds of friendship forged through generations of Ukrainian migration to Canada have woven our families and our communities together in many, many enriching ways. My colleagues and I are fiercely committed to this partnership between our peoples. Canadians have a special place in their hearts for the Ukrainian generations who have pioneered the West, they've settled our rugged terrain, and they continue to build our enduring dream of a true North, strong and free. And it is this call at the very heart of our national anthem that compels us to remember our friends when they are in turmoil. It is because of this deep friendship that our government is deploying a major Canadian observer mission to Ukraine for the upcoming parliamentary elections in October 2012. The Canadian International Development Agency and the Department of Foreign Affairs and International Trade have come together, as the Minister has said, to deploy 425 short-term and 75 long-term observers. While the majority will serve in an independent bilateral Canadian observation mission, some will also take part in the mission that's being managed by the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. The Canadian observers will remain on duty throughout the process, up to and including election day. They will maintain strict impartiality and dedication to helping Ukrainians themselves take greater leadership in the election process. Earlier this year, I was part of a group, along with Mr. Deckard, who visited Ukraine, and we saw how significant the Canadian investments have spurred economic growth in that economy, particularly in the agricultural sector. Canadian assistance is focused on helping Ukrainian farmers store their grain, transport it to market, and form cooperatives that empower ordinary farmers. Canadian economic assistance is also focused on reforming and strengthening commercial courts, strengthening the independence of these courts over those who are attempting to use them and subjectively prosecute opposition figures, entrepreneurial Ukrainians, and law-abiding businesses. My friends, these are very fragile times in the world economy even more so in a country in which the rule of law is essential for economic survival. The breadbasket of Europe is well served by Canadian investments that bolster the economic framework that's required to resist both economic and political backsliding. While in the Ukraine, I visited the Holodomor Memorial with my friends and colleagues to pay tribute to the Ukrainians who were victims of Stalin's communism. The carnage of communism was manifested in a horrific form of genocide, where the Soviet policy of industrialization translated into an indiscriminate starvation of millions of Ukrainian men, women, and children. We have seen what happens when freedom is forsaken. We know the intolerable costs of autocracy and the fragility of emerging markets and emerging democracies. So Canadians stand with their friends in Ukraine today. Freedom, democracy, human rights, and the rule of law are not for sale or negotiation in Ukraine today. Thank you. Colleagues, Mr. Grubb, President of UCC, Penny Elena, President of UCC Toronto, President of the Ukrainian Canadians, thank you very much for having us today. Minister, thank you so much for this announcement today because it is very, very important 
to the Ukrainian diaspora in Canada. We've been working long and hard, not only on this announcement, but even before the minister referred to the prime minister's visit to Ukraine. And that was uh, helped uh, in a great part by the uh, Canadian Friends of Ukraine, the League of Ukrainian Canadians, um, uh, uh, right, and uh, UCC been helping us shape that visit, helping uh, shape the words that the Prime Minister spoke in making sure that the character and the honor of Ukraine, based on, on the feelings of the diaspora here in Canada, were conveyed over there very clearly. And I think all of you will agree that the Prime Minister did a brilliant job when he visited Ukraine because he made sure that uh, they understood very clearly what Canada's feelings were, as Lois said, for freedom, democracy, human rights, and the rule of law, and a perpetuation of that in, in Ukraine. Because all of us remember, uh, as many of our families do, the scourge of communism, the scourge of totalitarianism, the, the victimization of 10 million people and starvation in the Polotomar. This can't happen again. And when democracy backslides like this, it is very fragile, it is very delicate, and it is, in fact, a very uh, troubling thing. And it's because of all of you here that the honor and the character of Ukraine is maintained because you convey that to us, and, and we convey that. Minister, thank you so much for conveying that into action, as, as did the Prime Minister and Minister Baird. So we're exceedingly grateful for, for this announcement today because it's going to bolster uh, democracy in Ukraine is going to bolster uh, the, the electoral, electoral process there, and it's very important that Canada makes that contribution. And again, I'd like to, uh, to thank so many of you here in the room today, and in fact, I'd like to point out Petro Kardashev who's helped us, I believe, Ukrainian Canadians, make this announcement possible in this space today. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, the President of the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, Mr. Paul Martin. Sir. Good afternoon, Minister Kenny, Parliamentary Secretary Lois Brown, Parliamentary Secretary Bob Decker, members of Parliament, Ken Opitz, and Stella Ambler. I also want to uh, uh, recognize uh, Teresa Brzozowski, who is President of the uh, Polish uh, Canadian Congress, uh, leadership of the Ukrainian Canadian community, dear friends. On behalf of the Ukrainian Canadian community, I commend the decision by the Government of Canada to send 500 election observers to Ukraine for this fall's parliamentary elections including a record 75 long-term observers to be deployed through Canada and the OSCE. Ensuring a free and fair election is critical to Ukraine's development as a democracy, and we are proud that Canadian election observers will monitor these elections to ensure the will of the Ukrainian people is heard. The UCC, together with many of our constituent member organizations, such as the Canada Ukraine Foundation and the League of Ukrainian Canadians, looks forward to working closely with the Government of Canada to help make this year's election observation mission successful. This election observation mission will be as important to the future of Ukraine's human rights and democratic development as was the historic 2004 presidential election. The Canada mission is, in addition to the work being undertaken by the UCC and the Canada Ukraine Foundation election observer mission. As many of you may know, the Ukrainian Canadian Congress and the Kennedy Ukraine Foundation opened their election observation mission office in July, on July 12th of this year in Kiev, Ukraine. And we're very proud that our mission is being headed by former Canadian Ambassador Derek Fraser. And we look forward to a high level of cooperation with Canada as well as all the other international election observer groups. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize and thank the tremendous contribution and cooperation of organizations like the League of Ukrainian Canadians who have helped promote democracy and human rights in Ukraine. From participating in missions to Ukraine recently with former CETA Minister Bev Voda and Parliamentary Secretary Bob Decker, to co-organizing speakers for parliamentary hearings with the Foreign Affairs Standing Committee and the Ukraine at a Crossroads Conference this past spring in Ottawa. I'd like to recognize and thank the Yeoman's effort and effectiveness of uh, Parliamentary Secretary Bob Decker, who largely spearheaded the parliamentary hearings in Ukraine and has been in Ukraine three times in one year, more so than many, I think, of, of us have been in Ukraine. And, uh, and, and, and please accept, uh, Bob, our heartfelt thanks for your commitment to Ukraine's democratic future. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to thank Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Minister of Foreign Affairs John Baird, Minister of International Cooperation Julian Fantino, Minister of Citizenship and Immigration and Multiculturalism Jason Kenney, and Canada's parliamentarians for their steadfast support of the people of Ukraine and human rights and democracy in Ukraine. 
You continue to demonstrate a long-term vision for international cooperation and leadership on the world stage, for which we heartfully thank and applaud you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 